Hi, my name is Elise, and welcome to the UC Davis Tahoe Environmental Research Center's Virtual Science Expo. This activity is called Pocket Solar System, and you can follow along in the detailed activity description provided in the link below. Also provided in the link below is one of these detailed folding guides, and this will be incredibly useful during this activity, so I'm going to keep it right here just in case I need a cheat sheet. If you take a look behind me, you can see four of the eight planets in our solar system. These four planets are known as the gas giants, and they are the farthest from the sun. The scale model behind me is at a six meter scale, but in this activity, we'll be creating a one meter scale, so you can carry it around with you wherever you go. What you'll need for this activity is a glue stick, a pair of kids safe scissors, one meter of receipt tape or other paper, and one of these pre-made planet sheets. I've already gone ahead and cut out our planets and glued them down onto our receipt tape for the sake of time. Now we're going to create our scale model on our one meter receipt tape. On the farthest end, you're gonna place the largest object in our solar system, which is the sun. Now, it's important to note that while the distances between the planets is accurate on this model, the size of the planets is not. And so the sun to scale would be much larger than it is pictured on your planet sheet. So once you place the sun at one end, you can place the Kuiper belt on the other. And you may have learned that Pluto is the farthest planet from the sun. However, in 2006, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. And Pluto actually resides in the Kuiper belt. So you can place the Kuiper belt on that far end. Once you've placed those two, you can fold the sun up to the Kuiper belt and make a crease. Now you can take a guess as to which planet is gonna go there. I know there is a cheat in front of you. And you might be surprised to know that it is Uranus, the second farthest planet from our sun, is only halfway to the Kuiper belt. Once you place Uranus, you can fold that back up and fold it once more again. And it's important to make a crease at each of your folds because this will demonstrate the orbit line around the sun. You can unfold that and at the one quarter mark, you'll be placing Saturn, and at the three quarters mark, you'll be placing Neptune. So now we have placed three planets, an asteroid belt, and the Sun. Now we'll be working between the Sun and Saturn to, re to place the remaining planets. So fold the Sun up to Saturn and make a crease, and at this one eighth mark, you'll place Jupiter. Now we've placed the four gas giants that we talked about at the beginning of this video. And between Jupiter and the Sun, we have four more planets in an asteroid belt to fit. So fold the Sun up to Jupiter, create a crease, and at this mark, we will be placing our closest asteroid belt. Between the Sun and the asteroid belt, that means we have our four closest planets to the Sun and things are starting to get a little cramped. So make sure that when you cut out your planets, you're cutting just as close as you can to the edge of the planet while you're still including the name of the planet. So after you place the asteroid belt, you're gonna fold the sun up to the asteroid belt. And right at this 132nd mark, you can place Mars. Between Mars and the sun, you'll be folding the sun up to Mars, creasing it, and then folding it once more to create a few orbit lines. When you open that up, you can place the remaining planets, which are Earth, Venus, and Mercury, in that order. So when you're all done, your final meter pocket solar system should look something like this. And if you also want to remember the order of the planets, you can create a mnemonic device or a memory sentence using some of the words in pink above my head.